What's up everybody? As always, I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today we'll be going over the new Low Free Configurator app, a new app that allows you to customize your Low Free keyboards. And now to get started, let's jump straight into the app. So this right here is the app you get when you download their app. And you'll see it has three main sections. You have the center area where you can customize your keyboard. We'll come back to that in a second. And then on the left hand side, you have your functions list where you have things such as lighting settings, button settings. You can think of this as a navigation. And on the top uh, here, you get different profiles. Personally, I have a default and an editing profile, but for this little video, we'll create a new profile here by just clicking the new plus icon. Confirm you want to create a new profile and you'll see it's at the end of the list here called profile one. We'll just change that to something like uh, favorite game just for the fun of it. You can click here to rename this uh, profile and you'll see it has changed the name as well. On the uh, bottom here, you have five different options. So you can export a profile, you can copy, uh, you can reset it, you can delete it, and you can also uh, import a new profile. When you delete uh, your profiles, make sure to keep at least one because you always want to have a profile. And then the last uh, section is on the top right hand here where you have your settings. If you click on this, you'll see you have your language as well as hardware and software uh, information. The language here, you'll, you'll have simplified Chinese as well as English as of now. Of course, I'm using English. And under software and hardware is where you can check if your keyboard and app is under the, uh, the latest version. So for example, here you see uh, KB means a keyboard. It is on the last version. And AP is the app, the configurator app. It's also on the latest version. If we close this and we go straight into the lighting settings, this will vary on your keyboard. Personally, I'm using the new Low Free Edge, their super slim mechanical keyboard. I've been really loving it. And the backlighting is not RGB, which means I won't have access to this here where I can customize the color, but it'd be pretty easy to use. You can just use either the uh, RGB settings here, where you can just add whatever color, for example, white is uh, 255, 255, 255 everywhere. And you can also just click on whatever color you want. You'll be able to change the color. But since I'm using the edge, uh, this isn't an option right now. You do still have, however, the option here to turn your light on into a breathe mode where well, as you can see, the line is kind of pulsating and off if you want. You can also customize the brightness of your keyboard. And all of this gets updated live on your keyboard, by the way. Uh, you don't see it on camera, but I see it here in front of me. And now if we're going over the button settings, you'll see this is where you can start to really customize your keyboard. You can just click on any key that you want to customize. And you'll see here you have a list of different functions that you can map to it. We'll go over all of them and what they mean. So mouse key is just to replicate a click on your mouse, whether that is the uh, left button, right button, the one in the middle, forward, backward, for example. And then you have the fire key, which would be super useful if you're playing like a shooter game. You can set how many times you want the uh, key to act as the fire button. Let's say it was 10 at 50 millisecond speed. If you just press your key here, we save and then press your key, you'll see it acts as uh, 10 clicks. So if you're playing like a shooter and you have a weapon where you have to click multiple times, this could be a cool option to just quick fire. You have your standard uh, keyboard button where uh, you, you, you can choose the first one you need to click. For example, if you want to do combos such as uh, maybe control A, if you want to be selecting everything in your document through just one button. You could be, uh, also if you don't want any, you can just press none and then add whatever you want. You cannot use the function key for any of those things. It's important to keep in mind. And you also can't use a double, uh, like control, control or control shift, for example, doesn't work uh, here. Then you have your multimedia key to customize, for example, uh, sound and stuff. If you want to do press uh, start, play, pause, next track, volume up, down, all of these things. Then we go into system functions. Uh, so if you want to put your computer into sleep, power, or wake up mode, just uh, by pressing one single key. I can definitely see that being a bit dangerous, but if you want to play with it, you can. And then you have the macro function, which we'll come back to in a second, but essentially macros allow you to record a series of actions. And then uh, using this button settings, you could, you could assign them to any one of your keys. And finally, you have the office keys for op open, copy, paste, all that good stuff if you want to assign that to a specific button. This is something I see myself use quite a lot, for example, during my editing uh, process, as well as whenever I'm playing with Figma, to, which is an app that allows you to do UI and UX design. But now, since we're building a 
uh, set up for our favorite game, we'll leave that as the firing key. I think this is a really cool option. 50 clicks might be a bit intense, so we'll go with 20. And now for the macro management, this is really where uh, your customization will start to shine. This could be used for a lot of different things. You can, uh, like I explained, save a bunch of different actions and package them into one single macro. So ways that I personally use this, uh, right now I have just two that are set up. They are to move my desktop from left to right. And the idea is that when I'm doing video editing, I need to change desktop quite often and I need to drag and drop files. So it's hard to be doing like a crazy keyboard combo while dragging and dropping files. So I set that to a macro, which I'll assign to a single button uh, at the end. But other ways you could use that is if there's any kind of action you have to take all the time, or uh, even if there's things you're writing often, for example, maybe you have to write your address quite often. Now let's say we're playing a game such as Mortal Kombat and we want to save a new combo in there. I've personally never really played this game, so I don't know any combos. I'll just have to make one up. Let's say we are trying to make a new combo, which will be like one, two, three or something like that. Well, you create a new macro as I just did, and then we'll rename it as a uh, game combo, for example. Oops game combo, save it, and then you just press record and you can start to click on your things. One, two, three, for example. And I'll also show you, you can see uh, if I hold four, hold five, hold six, and then let them go. I'll show you what all of this means right now. Now you can also, if you want, uh, you can also record mouse clicks and you can do the same thing. Uh, click, click, release, release. You can also add movement such as mouse left, mouse right. And now you have all of your recorded actions here. Now I'll show you what they mean and what you can do with them. So here on the left is your input, such as your keystroke, your different uh, mouse clicks and your mouse movements. And then the action here, you can read it as this means clicked, this means released. And as you can see, you can either do like a click release or if you hold them, you can do, you can click multiple different uh, actions and then release them afterwards. So for example, click four, five, six, and then release four, five, six. And then uh, when it comes to the mouse movements, what you see here is the number of times it is done. So you can also uh, change that here if you want to uh, say, for example, uh, move left 50 times or something, and then you click on that, you'll see it says uh, move left 50 times. And on the right here, you have your delay, which you can set from zero milliseconds to a bit over 65,000. So you have a really large range. And uh, let's just say it was 50 for this uh, example. You can paste that everywhere. We'll say that that is enough. And then another thing you can do is you can move uh, your actions to different parts of your uh, macro here on the bottom part. You can also just move them one by one if you want. And once you're all done with this, if you're happy, well, you can just save it. And if you're not, you can of course clear it here. You can delete any specific uh, part that you want. And then your macro game combo is saved. So if we go back to the button settings here, you'll see if uh, we'll say maybe the one here is for our new macro function, which is game combo. You can also choose the way of releasing it. The options here are to uh, regular, release stop, press down, release immediately, stop after the specific number of times. I will just keep it at regular for this one. Then of course you save it. So now you have two different macros. And this brings me back to, you can see here that the different buttons that we assigned uh, different functions to are in a blue highlight. This is so that it's easier to see the ones that you've played with. And if you hover over a regular key, let's say E, you'll see it says E and setting E. If you hover over a different button, you'll see one setting game combo. And this one should be yeah setting the fire key. So this makes it easier to see uh, the customization you've done to your keyboard. And if you want to just remove them afterwards, it's really easy. Just click on them, go back to the default function. Now, finally, the other settings area is where you have other more specific settings. So this here, exchange key WASD, means that your WASD keys will act as arrow keys. So if you've ever play, played a game where you couldn't assign WASD to moving, for example, well, you could just swap this to be the arrow keys. And then N key, when activated, allows the computer to register uh, a bunch of different keystrokes at the same time. And if you click that off, well, now you can just, uh, it will only register one single keystroke at a time. So you can't like press a few buttons at the same time, for example. 
And then you have the quick setup button here, which will open up the window uh, keyboard property, which is right there. So you can change uh, your different options directly through the uh, through the Windows keyboard property manager. And then at the bottom, you have your different USB report rates. So if you want your keyboard to be a bit uh, slower for any reason, well, you can do that here. Personally, always keep mine at 1000 Hertz, which is the fastest option. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any cool macros you'd like to share, definitely do. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what kind of creative stuff you guys can come up with. And have a nice day.